Good morning. My name is Maureen Chong. Welcome to Daily Devotional of May 17th. The Bible passage is Acts chapter 20, verse 17 to 36. And the title is, Farewell to a Beloved Church. From Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church. When they arrived, he said to them, You know how I lived the whole time I was with you, from the first day I came into the province of Asia. I served the Lord with great humility and with tears, and in the midst of severe testing by the plots of my Jewish opponents. You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. Therefore, I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of any of you, for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. When Paul had finished speaking, he knelt down with all of them and prayed. In the previous two days, we spent time with Paul on his third missionary journey over the years 53 to 57 AD. When he stayed in Ephesus for two years and three months, and that was about 53 to 55 AD. He had good results at the beginning, seeing a public turn around from sorcery to the worship of the Lord Jesus. But soon, the cultural religious bondage to the worship of Artemis fermented into a riot. Paul had to leave his new church of Ephesus. Later in year 60 AD, while he was imprisoned in Rome, he wrote to the Ephesians, Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground 
and after you have done everything to stand. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 to 13. To Paul, spiritual warfare was real, especially in Ephesus. Therefore, the Ephesian church must be alerted. Today, on his return trip from Macedonia towards the end of his third missionary journey, he avoided stopping at Ephesus. Rather, he stayed at Miletus, some 30 miles south of Ephesus on the Mediterranean coast. He sent people to Ephesus to fetch the elders of the church so that he could have a heart-to-heart -heart chat, a farewell talk with them. We learn the essentials of his speech. First, Paul's life was his sermon. Under great pressure from his enemies, he served the Lord with humility and with tears. He did not serve for personal gains. He said, I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Verse 33 to 35. We recall how he had a side job of tent making along with Priscilla and Aquila. Paul was never a burden to the new believers at Ephesus. Following the footsteps of Jesus, he gave more than he received. Second, Paul's preaching was thorough, declaring that all must turn to God in repentance and have faith in the Lord Jesus. He had not hesitated to proclaim to them the whole will of God. Hence, if any of the Ephesians believers were eternally lost, Paul would be innocent of their blood. He says that clearly in verse 26. Now third, Paul was compelled by their spirit to go to Jerusalem quickly, even though in every city on his journey, the Holy Spirit warned him that prison and hardship were facing him. And even so, Paul said, However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Paul was dedicated in his loving obedience to the Lord Jesus. The gospel is the message that must be passed along at all costs, including his own life. With this apprehension of imminent suffering, Paul was aware that he wouldn't be seeing the efficient elders ever again. So he charged them with the responsibility to keep watch over their flock, the church that the Holy Spirit had made them overseers. Paul gave them a stern warning. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. And even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years, I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. Sadly, persecution would also come from within the community of faith. However, God and the word of his grace would build them up through these challenges to receive their eternal blessings. This is similar in tone to Jesus' prayer in John chapter 17 before he went to the cross. Jesus had taught his disciples thoroughly and had led by example. 
his disciples had to face the future without his physical presence. However, the Holy Spirit would be their guide. They would not be taken out of the world to escape suffering. Rather, they would remain in the world to be Christ's witnesses. Despite the reality of suffering, Christ had overcome the world. The disciples would be refined in faith under testing and trial. They could not bypass their cross in entering the kingdom of God. Having prayed this way, Jesus did accept his destiny on the cross. What have I learned from Paul's speech? My goal is to witness for Christ by life and speech to the end. Live the life of pure motives and practice what I preach. While not perfect, the direction to sanctification should be there. Leave no doctrine untouched. Waste no private and public opportunities. Trust that God will protect and guide his church. Be ready to let go and walk off the stage. Love never ends. Thank you, God, for making Paul such a good shepherd for the efficient church. And may we all be good shepherds in our own arenas of ministry. Thank you for joining me. God bless you and see you tomorrow. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you.